right, welcome everyone to 12.3. This is the dot product. In this video, right, I want to talk a little bit about what on earth is this thing called the dot product, right? So I'm going to define it. Better yet, we need to talk a little bit about why. What is this thing used for? Oh, silly typo, dot product. I'll have this fixed in yours, but in mine, I have a little typo here. Uh, and then finally, right, we want to get a little practice, right, actually computing the dot product and everything. So, okay, dot product. Uh, backing up for a second, right? Last section, we learned how to add vectors together. We learned how to do scalar multiplication, all that sort of stuff. But we didn't learn how to do vector multiplication, aka, you know, a vector product. And it turns out, interestingly enough, for vectors, there are kind of two natural, different uh, ways to multiply vectors together that actually have some physical meaning behind them that we actually want to talk about. So today, we're going to talk about one of them, the dot product. And the claim is, this was uh, kind of brought up, this comes about naturally when you're trying to find the angle between two vectors. Okay, so let's come about this thing naturally. So I'm going to take a couple vectors here, two vectors. Here is vector A, doo -doo -doo. here is vector B, doo -doo -doo -doo. there they are. So vector A and vector B. And I'm going to move them so that they have the same initial point. In fact, in my drawing, they already do. I made them position vectors. They start at the origin, all that good stuff. But if they didn't for you, right, move them so they have the same initial point. And then again, my goal is to find uh, angle between them. So I'm going to draw an angle theta, the angle between these two vectors right here. And my goal is to try to find this theta. Okay. Now, whenever you're trying to find angles, right, especially when you have a picture looking like this, maybe our trigonometric skills kick in and we think, well, we're good at finding angles if they're part of a triangle, right? So I want to add one more kind of natural line to complete uh, a triangle. Bad spelling. There we go. The triangle. So the claim is I'm going to go ahead and draw this natural line here. I'm going to label this as vector C. Call this vector C. And the question is, right, uh, the claim is we can write vector C in terms, right, so tell me what vector C is in terms of A and B. Vector notations, there we go. Uh, and the hint is that it's not A plus B, okay? So let me go ahead and draw, let me do, if I did uh, there's my vector a. If I do negative a, right, it's kind of the same length, but it's in the opposite direction. So there's uh, negative a. And so if I traveled along b, and then I traveled along, I'm going to move this here. Oh no, undo. Traveled along negative a. Travel along b, then I travel along negative a. The claim is. Again, travel along B, then travel along negative A. This is B minus A, and this has the same direction and the same magnitude as this vector C above it right here. Right? They are friends. I draw them both purple, you know, to really indicate that they're both friends. So the claim is, yes, this is vector B minus A is the same length and the same direction as C. So they are the same vector, B minus A. Okay. So let's use this. Let, now let me find this angle C. And in order to do this, we are going to use our good old friend, the law of cosines. And you got to remember, the law of cosines is like the Pythagorean theorem. It's an upgrade of the Pythagorean theorem, but it's for when you don't have right triangles. right? So for, if you have a right triangle, that's great. You can use the Pythagorean theorem. But if you don't have a right triangle, then you have to use the law of cosines. So the law of cosines, right? it talks a little bit about side lengths of triangles. So our triangle has side length maybe c. So c squared is equal to, uh, let me do this more naturally, a squared, the length of another side, plus b squared, right? And all of these are the lengths of these vectors. Okay, so that's what the Pythagorean theorem looks like. Now, law of cosines, the more generalized version, has this minus 2 a b times the cosine of the angle between them. And our goal, remember, is to find that angle theta. So this is great because now we have you know a formula that brings it up naturally. Okay, now, as we brought up before, C here is the same thing as B minus A. 
So now we have one fewer variables. That's always nicer to get fewer variables whenever possible. Again, our goal is to solve for theta here. So I'm going to bring this out, right? The way that the dot product comes out is when you actually look at the components of each one of these things. So I'm going to bring this out in the components, right? So this is the vector notation uh, all up here, but I'm going to bring out its components, right? So you can imagine that uh, vector A has components maybe A1, A2, A3. You can imagine that vector B has components B1, B2, B3, so on and so forth. And I guess, let me go also write b minus a should have, well, we know how vector addition and scalar multiplication works. It should have b1 minus a1, b2 minus a2, and b3 minus a3. OK. So now let's bring up the components. We know how to do the length, right? So these are the magnitude squared, which just basically means there's not going to be any square roots. Very nice. So let's go ahead and write these down. OK. So the magnitude of b minus a squared. So this is going to be b1 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus a2 squared plus b3 minus a3 squared. Remember with the magnitudes here, they would technically all be under the square root, but now because it's squared, right, that gets rid of that square root. Okay, over here, a squared. So, so the magnitude of a squared. So a1 squared, a2 squared, a3 squared, plus b1, b1 squared, b2 squared, b3 squared, minus 2, the magnitude of a, the magnitude of b, times the cosine of the angle between them. And I'm going to leave those just as they are. It turns out those won't cancel with anything. So I'm going to leave them just as they are. Now, let's expand all this out. Oh my goodness. All right. b1 squared minus 2a1b1 plus uh, a1 squared. So remember, when you expand this out, you have to foil it. That's where that negative 2a1b1 comes from. Now, likewise b2 squared minus 2a2, b2 plus a2 squared plus b3 squared minus 2, a3, b3, uh, a3 squared. Uh, and I'm going to use the powers of technology. This part here all stays the same. So theoretically, I have a way to copy this. Copy. And I believe in you, paste. All right, so that all stays the same here. Thank you, technology. OK, my goodness. What on earth are we doing here? Ah, we were trying to solve for theta again. Well, notice now that we have a b1 squared here, and we have a b1 squared here. A1 squared here, a1 squared here. Boom, boom. We have the b2 squared, b2 squared. We have the a2 squared, a2 squared. We have the b3 squared, b3 squared, a3 squared, uh, a3 squared. Sorry, I guess I have a typo there. a3. No, that's not the right one. a3 should be this one. Uh, a3. There we go. So we get actually a surprising amount of cancellation here. And then you'll notice what's left over. Notice there's a negative 2 here, there's a negative 2 here, there's a negative 2 here, and there's a negative 2 here. So every term has a negative 2 in it. We can cancel those as well, right? So I'm going to go to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And what's left over, this is my final line, I promise, a1b1 plus a2b2, right? So that's this first one here, the second one here. Again, remember, we canceled out those negative 2s. We divided by negative 2 on all the sides uh, in all of the terms a3, b3 is equal to the magnitude of a, the magnitude of b, and cosine of the angle between them. And the claim is this is where the dot product comes from. This is why we bring it up. The claim is the angle between the two vectors, a and b, is given by, right, the last steps. If you wanted to solve for this theta right here, you would have to divide by these right here. So I'm going to go ahead and write a1, b1, 
A2, B2, A3, B3, divided by the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. And this would give solve for cosine of theta. And so if you wanted to get rid of that cosine, well, you would have to apply a cosine inverse. Cosine inverse. And so if you did that on both sides, that would get rid of the cosine, and you would have theta equals. So this is what the angle between those two vectors is equal to. And this is why we bring up a special definition. That special thing, this A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. When you actually multiply the components together and then you add the results, this is what we call the dot product. And the reason why we bring it up, right? I mean, you can make all sorts of definitions. I can make definitions, you can make definitions, but the definitions that actually last are the ones that have some physical meaning behind them. And so the fact that this term, this A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, actually shows up when you're trying to figure out what is the angle between a couple of vectors, that's why this definition has stuck around so long. This is why it gets one of these fancy names and you see it in all the math textbooks is because it's actually used for stuff. So again, this is called the dump product. Of vector a and vector b. Okay, another interesting consequence of this, right? The claim is two vectors are perpendicular. Another name for that, which we'll use a lot in this course, is orthogonal. Two vectors are perpendicular, right? They have a 90 degree angle between them, aka orthogonal, right? So orthogonal 90 degrees, remember this. If and only if, that's the kind of IFF here, if and only if, a dot b equals zero. Why? Right? So let's go back to this line right here. If the angle between the vectors is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, cosine of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians is zero. So that means that this entire side right here is zero, is equal to this is the dot product. That's the definition, a dot b. So if that cosine of theta is equal to zero, probably because that theta, you know, is 90 degrees or negative 90, you know, negative pi over two, that's fine as well. Then the dot product gives out zero. Very cool. Okay, so that's a nifty consequence here of the dot product. Okay, finally, I wanna note, right? Uh, when you take the pro dot product between two vectors, you get a scalar. Remember, scalar is just a fancy term for a real number. It is a number, right? These things are being added together. It is not a vector. Exclamation point. <laughs> so yes, this is always a number. It is not a vector. It's important to remember, you know, are we talking about numbers or are we talking about vectors, right? Okay, now let's get a little bit of practice before we sign off. So find the dot product between these two vectors, determine if they're perpendicular or not. Okay, so the first one here. 1, 0, 1, dot, negative 1, 3, 1. So we do A1, B1. So this is 1 times negative 1 plus A2, B2. 0 times 3 plus A3, B3. 1 times 1. So I have negative 1 plus 0 plus one is equal to zero. So the dot product is equal to zero. The answer is yes. They are perpendicular. Or orthogonal, right? Okay, that's great because it's really hard to just, you know, staring at these numbers here, I have no idea. You know, I could graph it, uh, you know, maybe using the Monroe 3D calc plotter, but just looking at these numbers, it's very hard to tell. So the dot product uh, is very useful in that regard. Let's try another one. Ah, here we have writ the, written out in the linear combinations. Quite often when I see this, I actually like to transform them into, right, 3, negative 2, 1, dot, 0, 2, 4, I, J, K, right? There we go. So the dot product, we have 3 times 0, 0. We have negative 2 times 2, negative 4. And we have 1 times 4, 4. So this is equal to 0. They sum to 0. So again, the answer is yes. 
they are perpendicular. All right, so these first couple, right, we've determined the dot product, and we figured out are they perpendicular or not, right? Um, okay, one more. So I have uh, vectors A, B, and C, B, where I have the following things, right? Here's A, B, and point C. So, okay, let's first of all go ahead and write down what A is. So I start at A and I go to B. So I start at 3 and I go to 5, I had to move 2. I start at negative 2 and I go to 6, I had to move 8. All right, how about the position vector B? So I start at C and I go to B. So I start at negative 1 and I go to 5. I had to move 6. I start at negative 3 and I move to 6. I had to move 9. Okay, so there are the position vectors. Now let's go ahead and figure out the dot product. A dot B is equal to, okay, 2 times 6 is going to be 12 plus 8 times 9 is going to be 72 last I checked. So this is 84 altogether. So the answer is no, not perpendicular or not orthogonal. All right, and it turns out this dot product gets used for all sorts of things. We'll scratch the surface here in class, but that's it for the video. That's it for now. I'll see you guys a little bit later. Thanks for watching.